<laughs> Time to do some more vlogs, me hearties. All right, if you've been working from home this year because of lockdown, which pretty much everyone has, then you will finally appreciate the struggles of the poor folk like us who are the long-term remote workers. And you'll know that people appreciate, finally, the working from home is tough because you've got all these distractions. You've got your partners, your offspring. Daddy, you got me? your pets vying for your attention constantly, trying to drag you away from the work that you so desperately need to do to come and play with their Duplo or do whatever. And this was one of the most common questions people would ask us when they found out that Exposure Ninja was fully remote. They'd say, how on earth do you run a company from home with all of the distractions that brings? Well, truth be told, I've actually always struggled with the opposite problem, justifying downtime. So because I love so much what we do and I'm so passionate about all the things that we need to do and I see the world as like this big, vast space of things that need to be conquered and things that need to be fixed and improved, I've always found it really difficult to, to turn off, to finish, to shut the laptop and leave it for the day. So, you know, I'd end up working a bit later or working a bit earlier or being on my phone while I'm eating, you know, just constantly constantly, constantly moving, constantly progressing. And to be honest, I've never really seen a problem with that because since the start of my work career, I've always just tried to maximize the productivity of my days. I've always seen time off and downtime as kind of failure in a way. If I'm really enjoying what I'm doing, why would I need to stop doing it? I need all the hours I can get to get to where I want to go as quickly as possible. So why would I want to not do that? Why would I want to go on holiday? Well, how's that going to help? How's that going to be productive? And that's just how I saw myself was like this productivity machine that was here to drive as much improvement in the world as possible as quickly as possible at the expense of everything else, right? I didn't need to escape from my life because I loved it. And then to be honest, the world kind of validated that approach because Exposure Ninja grew. We grew to a multi-million pound business. We've got 100 staff. It seems to be going okay. So when things are going okay, the last thing you want to do is radically change up. I'm not going to now start going to play golf because that's when things are going to slide, right? That's when things are going to come off the rails. And this is what I told myself. I cannot stop the 100% productivity because everything will turn to crap. <laughs> So this is modus operandi for Tim prior to July 2020. Time off is pathetic. Time off is failure. Time off is for the week. I don't need that. Other people might need that. That's fine because they need to escape from their lives, but I don't. <laughs> you know where this is going, don't you? <laughs> And then in July, we embarked on a project which is probably the most stressful of any that we've embarked on in Exposure Ninja's career so far for me personally. And when I tell you about it, it's gonna seem so trivial and so stupid, but it tapped into a whole bunch of my obsessions. We decided to conduct a company-wide pay review. And the reason we wanted to do this is our long-term vision is to make Exposure Ninja the best agency in the world. And that includes paying our people well above market rate. We we want to be able to pay our people more than they can get at any other profitable agency because our team have responded so well to lockdown we decided we really wanted to bump people's pay by quite a lot so we embarked on this company-wide pay review so this sounds really simple right all you need to do is just increase people's pay but the thing about a pay review is you've got to balance increasing people's pay with maintaining profit margin and the financial stability of the company because it's all very well to just increase everyone's pay 20 percent but if that means your profit margin goes down to zero and it means that the company is no longer sustainable then that doesn't really serve anyone right because there's no job for them so we have this thing where we want to increase people's pay but we can't just pay them more for doing no more work we've got to figure out how to get some sort of efficiency or find a model where we're able to increase people's pay without destroying the health of the company so i became obsessed about this because for me this was like a it was a survival thing we had to figure this out otherwise we risk destroying the company so i I became obsessed with looking for a super efficiency, something that would allow us to increase pay whilst also increasing efficiency across the company so we could pay our people more because they were able to do more output, right? So either we remove admin or we improve their workflow in some way so that they're able to get more output without having to spend more time. And this became a total obsession. It was like the main thing that myself and Charlie, our general manager, were working on. We spent time looking at financial models 
and projecting what things would look like. And it started like playing on my head all the time. So I'd be going to bed at night thinking about it. I'd be waking up in the night thinking about it. I'd be waking up early in the morning thinking about it, not getting back to sleep. And over time, I started to become aware that it was playing on my mind. But my only response to it was, I just need to figure it out. I just need to work through it. I just need to get through it and then it's gonna be okay. The questions I was asking were like, what if this is the thing that kills Exposure Ninja? I was spending all my time at that point looking through the accounts of agencies that had gone into administration because we were looking at acquisitions. And the common thread amongst all of them was that they were just paying their people ridiculous amounts and they had these crazy costs. So they'd end up going into the wall. And I'm thinking, what if this is the first step? What if they had a pay review like this? They made some bad calls. They couldn't really get out of it. They couldn't undo that. And it ended up driving them to the wall. And because I was so focused on this thing and I was so intent on getting it sorted, it just became a total obsession for me. And then in July, I was riding on my bike in the morning and I had a seizure. No one really knows what caused it, but I woke up in the ambulance, immediately burst into tears and said to the paramedic, at least this means I can have a week off. Now, what was really interesting and slightly frustrating to me at the time was that even though nobody knew what caused it, when they asked what I did for work and I told them, they all immediately put it down to stress. I thought, that's ridiculous. How can you possibly make such a judgment? You don't know anything about me. <laughs> Maybe they did. <laughs> so I've been pushing myself as hard as I could at work. I've been pushing myself on my exercise. I'll be doing everything that I possibly could, 100 miles an hour, no downtime, and I snapped. But even though when I woke up in the ambulance, I was like, finally, I can take a week off. I actually only really took a few days off and then I was straight back at it. I thought I cannot leave the troops. I cannot let them to just do this stuff on their own. I have to help. I have to get back in there. I have to figure out this pay review. I need to be back in Exposure Ninja. That was in July. By September, the people I knew were telling me I needed to take a break. People who I talked to a lot were like, Tim, you need a break. You need to go on holiday. They didn't even have any context. They were just like, you need to go on holiday. I watched some of the Exposure Ninja videos that I made from that period back now, and I can see I'm gone. Like my eyes are open, the mouth is talking, but there's just nothing there. I'm just totally checked out. <laughs> it's like my brain was totally full. There was no space for anything else. I don't even remember making most of those videos. And I had an epiphany one day. I was sitting in front of my computer and the fans were blowing like crazy and it had all these processes open. And you know when your computer gets to that stage where you just need to turn it off and turn it back on again because it resets all the stuff that's going on in the background just like shuts up and starts again. And I thought maybe I'm a little bit like that. So I decided to do it. I decided to take a week off with nothing planned, no holiday, just not work for a week. Pretty difficult because I work from home so I had to not go into the office. I had to not open the laptop. I had to not check in on Slack, but I did it. And honestly, I'm not really even sure what I did for that week. I think I just like walked around. <laughs> I think I went to the bakery every day. I ate lots of yummy food. And, and then towards the end of the week, I went on a long train journey. I love traveling to give me inspiration. I used to love going to America because you can do loads of planning on the flight because there's no Wi-Fi, and you just get some space and time on your own. So I went on a long train journey because it was lockdown. I couldn't go to the US. And I just went to get some inspiration and to think and to clear my head. Made loads of plans for the future of Exposure Ninja and I really, really enjoyed it. I also bought a drum kit and started to play again for the first time in a really long time. And then when I came back to work, I started to notice some things. First thing I noticed was ideas. Before I took this time off, I'd be in meetings, listening to other people having all these amazing ideas, and I'd be thinking, wow, everyone's got such great ideas. Where are my ideas? Why don't I ever have any good ideas? But after I'd taken some time off, I noticed that I began waking up in the night again. Now, I wasn't waking up in the night with stress. I was waking up with ideas. It's like they'd come back and all of a sudden I had loads of ideas again. My ideas are back. <laughs> I bought this drum kit. Now I used to play drums loads when I was younger. When I was a professional drummer I'd be playing six, eight hours a day and I it was my entire life. And then when Exposure Ninja took off I just completely stopped playing. And the main reason I stopped playing was just because I felt like I couldn't justify doing it. It just felt pointless. I wasn't trying to become a professional drummer anymore so it wasn't productive. It didn't feel like a good use of time. But I started to get a bit curious and I started 
tempted to think, maybe I should play a little bit. So I got a drum kit and I didn't really know how much I'd play. So I bought a pretty basic one. I was like, this could be one of those things I do where I get it and then I use it three times and then I never use it again because I just go back to work. But honestly, it's been great. I've been playing it pretty much every day and I've been really, really enjoying it. And I thought I would be terrible, but honestly, between you and me, I'm actually not that bad. <laughs> And I think the reason I'm enjoying it is because I'm playing. There's no outcome, there's no goal. I'm not doing it to be productive, I'm doing it just to play. You know, when I watch Luca playing with his Duplo, he's not practicing, he's not honing his craft to be the best at Duplo in the world. He's not figuring out how to monetize the Duplo. He's not trying to solve the world's problems with Duplo. He's not trying to make everyone's lives around him better with Duplo. He's just playing and he loves it. He's not trying to make it perfect, he's just enjoying the watching the wheels go over the bumps. That's just what he loves. So you know what? Maybe I'm gonna make a drum video. Maybe I'm gonna make my first drum video for nine years. Maybe I'll even stick it at the end of this video, who knows? So here's what I learned from working myself into a seizure. Take holiday. Holiday isn't anti-work, it's complementary. Just like sleep isn't anti-daytime, it's complementary. It's the preparation that allows you to have a great day. There's nothing to be ashamed of by taking holiday. The second thing I learned is to play. If every second is productive, then creativity and passion suffers. Both play and productivity are important to maximize your output. But just like holiday and work, they're complementary. The third thing I learned is don't wait till the paramedics, your family and friends tell you to do it. So here goes. I bloody love it. <laughs>